So we're relaxed, glutes are relaxed. I'm going to run through those two, the sad clown face, and then that front rack position. I'm looking up at the ceiling, getting a nice amount of extension. When I pull, I feel the heels drive in the ground, like almost like a, there's a string from the back of my skull, that EOP, down to my heels. I'm just pulling that string taut. I'm trying to sad clown on my face. Draw that chin in. Now sometimes sphere of tension works well with there as well. Extend, lever that in. I'm trying to pull the flatten. Drive that jaw in. I almost have to shut up just so I can get it, right? I can't coach and do it. Really have to put 100% in to flatten that out. And it's still not. I'm still kind of looking up, as you can tell. Let's right, do the front rack position. Sometimes I like that as a good segue into sphere of tension. Nice and loose. I'm going to extend the neck. This just helps me relax everything. Helps me get control from the abs. I'm going to breathe through this. I'm breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Do a quick measuring stick hands, tightening that stomach. It's reminding me tight. And we're also getting wide. This is one little trick as well. So we need to sometimes think of the trap. It goes all the way here. Pull wide before we can get tall. If I'm just kind of collapsed, easy to get that neck in there. If I get wide and I spread, like your Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to show off your big lats, I get wide, then I get tall. We're pulling that trap in all directions, and that really hits it as well. So think about that. Maybe get broad first before you get tall. Let me show you just one more from the side, just so you can see that front rack position. And I'll kind of combine it with the jaw. I'll hit it from all angles. Extension. Quick measuring stick hands. It's okay if you don't know what that is. Just try to right below the ribs, push in, tighten. Chin in, lengthen the back of the neck. I'm just going to shut up and do it. Draw the jaw in. Lifting. And I'm just going to... Oh, right? Exhausting. But that just takes so much pressure off. It almost feels like a bit of a headache is coming on when you're doing it. just because it's so much pressure. It's putting a pretty big strain on those trap muscles. They can feel a little headachey when you're doing it, right? So hopefully you can see how that leveled that gaze out just a little bit more. You can see I had to be quiet. And just, just hit it. That's how much intentionality I'm putting into it, all right? Let's do one more just from behind so you can see. Do one more from behind just so we can see that broadness, stretching the trap laterally, left and right, opening up, getting wide in the back. You'll feel just where all those muscles attach. Your lats come and they're attached to the spine, your traps are here. We're just taking, we're opening everything up before we get tall. So again, nice and relaxed. We'll get some extension. And before I think length, I'll just get broad, wide. I'm kind of going into their long wing position a little bit, but I don't flip the hands just yet. Because that kind of prevents you from getting wide if you flip the hands too forward too fast. Maybe just hands on your quads. You'll feel the quads engage. You'll feel you're getting wider, broader. Then I'll think about length last. Pulling that chin in. Sad clown face. Then I can work on things like long wing. And it'll feel like, oh, like if you look at my hands. If I'm big and broad, I can't even turn my palms forward all the way. And I'm trying. If I collapse and I get narrow, it's very easy. So there's a lot of these, I call it hitting the wall, that you'll notice. You'll notice it when you're going from extension, trying to bring the chin back, you're hitting that wall. It's 
uh, it's very hard to do, right? Hard to level the gaze. That theme repeats itself a lot. The elbow straightening, right? It's easy. If we get big, we get broad. If we get expansive, we get long. Not so easy. We want to feel that bit of an impossibility. That's what you'll notice if you're just watching the foundation training videos that the way I'm teaching it is going to look a little, how I'm posing myself is going to look a little different than how they're doing it. And the way I'm teaching is just because of the population that comes into the back mount here, they need more extension in their bodies. Some already have too much extension, and that's why we need to work on just length in general. But a lot of people are already too flexed. Like the runway model might have just the head flexed back too much, or they're just sandwiched down. So just getting that big cervical curve, and it's actually about talking to the low back here. Getting that extension, allowing my pelvis to draw back, then lengthening. You'll notice I'm still looking up at the ceiling, but I can feel, I can feel these muscles. And deep below, you know, the lat, you have the rectors that go all the way up, little multifidus muscles all the way up to the suboccipital region. We want those working. So we want to almost you're taking the back of the skull, you're getting your body some extension, which is good. It's engaging the joints. And I'm pulling, I'm prying open. I want to activate that lower back pulling and pulling and you feel just expansive in that low back now i can level my head right i can go here i still feel it in my low back but sometimes you're just so used to bending at your low back getting a little extra from the neck like i'm teaching you and actually feel really good in that low back that's why I teach it that way, especially when you go into your founder, your hinge. But get a lot of that motion. I can really feel that low back. Then I go here. I just want to keep that stretch build on it. That might feel better than here where I just bend from my low back. You can see a bit of the tuck, and the flattening of the spine. We're here. If I can keep this big posture, it's a bit excessive. then I'm sure that there's no unwanted motion, that instability, unwanted motion happening at the lumbar spine. So it's a bit extra, but for some people it's necessary. And for those who need to restore their curve, they've lost their neck curve, they've really shoved the pelvis forward, I need them to go here just so their pelvis shifts back underneath. And it should feel, like, oh wow, that's, that's tough. Get the eyes level with the horizon. That's tough to get that belly in. That posture alone would be very, very tough. That why, that's why it may look a little bit different than what you're seeing. And everyone has different body types as well. So instead of just trying to mirror or just look like the person on the screen when you're doing foundation training, think about your body. Get that body awareness. You want to feel the pull. You want to feel like that hitting that wall idea I talked about. Where just, oh, I just can't bring the chin level. You're shaking and you feel it working your whole body. You start sweating. And also pain. It should eliminate the pain when you move. You should feel like even that little bit of ooh, that uncomfortableness. It should feel, oh, it's very secure. It feels very good. I can move. It's shaky. It's hard. But it teaches that spine to be long and strong and broad. We're limiting motion, as much motion as possible at the spine. And that includes the neck. We don't want the neck, especially when we go down, we don't want to see this either, right? We don't want to go there. So we're trying to just hold that neutral neck nice and long. And that's why it might look like I, I, my chin is still jutting a little bit, but you'll notice you're trying as hard as you can. You'll feel everything really working. So I should be looking at the floor, not at the wall, all right? Pull that chin in, especially if you go into the sphere, just pull your head away from that sphere without letting your low back flex. That's a lot, and that's a lot to work on. But like I said, you have 4,000 times a day to work on. That's where that shake comes in. Don't get frustrated if you don't feel that. You're like, mm, what's he talking about? It comes, it comes, just keep practicing. Those are all good little cues, little litmus tests.
to know that you're on the right path when you start noticing that. And you'll just feel it. You'll feel, oh, shaky, but you feel so loose. It stretches out all that fascia, that binding and compressing and restricting our motion, and even our nerves and everything. Helps open it all up. So just doing a few minutes there, I feel incredibly loose. I'm ready for the day. Hopefully that helps. So here's another reason why we care. All these nerves, nerve roots coming out of the spine, your, your brain stems right there, the cranial nerves, vagus nerve being so important. We want to get pressure off the nervous system, getting that length out of the back of the neck, beating away that upper trap dominance, so important. The entire spinal cord, the nerve roots that go to all your muscles and all your organs. Over here, you can see green there, that vagus nerve. Very important, it runs very close to your atlas bone, goes to your heart, your lungs, and your gut. You want to get pressure off these nerves. You need that parasympathetic input to the body. So the upper trap dominance, everything's very tight in the back. SCM, very tight, because it goes to the back right there, your cerebellum is. So we want to engage strengthen it's just strengthening it's a pulley system this is winning it's pulling so if we strengthen things in the front with the chest big and strong again we'll have even tension front to back and then that will help the joints it'll help the nervous system and you don't have to understand all this you just have to know okay there's nerves there and there's important there there's life there we got to take pressure off of it we got to fight gravity get tall get expansive if there is pain there's weakness now, all these videos we're making in conjunction with Foundation Training's protocols. So this will be under the neck pain protocol or the cervical pain protocol. And it has a lot to do with the shoulders. So let me show you your trap muscle here. So we can see it's dissected here on the right. On the left, we get this big diamond-shaped muscle. And it runs up all the way to the skull here, the occiput. And this works with the muscle here in the front, which you can see here. The sternocleidomastoids goes to your clavicle and your sternum. That runs up to this bony part here. You probably see it better on the model. So I'll show you on Billy Bones here. That's your mastoid process. So very close to the ox, but they both create a lot of extension. Now none of us are walking around like this, looking at the ceiling. We tend to throw the pelvis forward to level our gaze. You may not notice that you even have this upper trap dominance. What happens is it just creates this tendency to bend at the back, even when we squat, and then we start lifting from the traps, and it creates this dominance. Now, some people have this more left and right. That's not really the focus of this video today. It's just how to address both with good neck posture that all of the foundation training videos will build on. They're always talking about, no matter what video you're doing, they're always gonna talk about that chin back, chest up, the lengthening, so keep doing your homework there. It's just kind of a, a deeper look at the why, where this comes from, and how it affects everything else. Another thing to think about, and we can see this here, as this goes down all the way, it inserts into this thoracolumbar fascia. A lot of lower back pain actually comes from this dominance. Like I showed you before, when, when I have that pelvis that's collapsed, I bend from the low back that's straining all this fascia, this thoracolumbar fascia. And even with that, when you're sleeping, this is still short, tight, and pulling. It's pulling upwards. So it's pulling, damaging. Even when you're sleeping, it could be like you wake up, feel like someone beat you with a baseball bat. That's why it's, it's damaging during the night. That can set up joint issues, spraining issues later down the road. It starts with the tendinous issues and then builds into joint damage. Right? So that's pathologically why all that's important. Let's talk about how you correct it, not just doing the videos, but let's break it down a little bit here as well. So I know we talked about how it brings you an extension, but let's just go there right now. Just so we can work about work on our foundation, our hips and our feet. Because if we're always kind of dumped forward, we need to just get extension, let the pelvis drift backwards. You'll feel your glute muscles relax. You'll feel your weight shift into your heels, out of your toes. Those are all good things. The knees become very loose. Sometimes you have this kind of locked knee sensation. The glutes are always squeezing. You gotta let that relax, bring the weight shift into the heels. 
and just look up. So you feel a stretch. Just really extend the neck. That's going to give us this normal lordosis. You look at Billy here. He's got a little C shape. That's normal. That's what we want. We don't want it flat, and we don't want it excessive. So let's just get that normal lordosis in the neck. Then we're going to work on pulling length, bringing that shin back. Now we talked about that SCM muscle, right? Where it runs in that mastoid. So we're technically pulling length into that SCM to pull the big chest. So here, this cue, they give a lot of chin back, chest up. That's not this, right? We don't want to thrust the ribs forward. Because then you feel like, okay, my stomach's not working at all there. In this loose posture that I had to come into, you'll feel, okay, I have good control in my stomach. When I breathe, I can tighten, I can engage. I'm not locked out. I'm loose. I have good control there from the stomach and the hip flexors. That's what we want. I'm getting good extension from the neck. And I'm pulling length. So you feel like you're getting taller. I'm opening everything up. The shoulders don't follow. Remember the trap dominance. The shoulders are raised. So we want them packed down. And I want to work on pulling the back of the neck long, getting the chin in, not letting the shoulders follow. And you might look at me and you're like, oh, you're still looking at the ceiling a little bit. There's a few cues we can use here to help us level our eyes at the horizon. But it should be almost tough like that. If we're just doing this and it's really easy to get the chin in, you're probably thrusting the ribs forward. You're probably bringing the pelvis forward too. So there should be a battle. You do want it to be tough. So if you're like me, you feel like you're pulling the chin in and you hit like a wall, it's trying to shake you, that's good. I like you there, but we can take it a little bit farther. So there's two things I like. One, Jesse Salas taught me. Another one they'll talk about in the video, which is this, the sad clown face. Sometimes relaxing the jaw and a frowning, drawing that mandible in, right? Hard to talk when you're doing that. You're engaging all these muscles here, the platysma. That sad clown face can really help lift this suboxial area and open it up. That lax jaw and then draw it back in, frown. Retract the mandible. You almost have to open it up a little bit. Let the jaw hang open. We'll run through that again. Relax. I'm in extension. Do this all day long. There's no excuse not to do this. You can do this sitting in a chair, driving in your car. Any time is a good time. Maybe not any time. Extension. Loose. Knees are loose. I can feel the weight in the heels. Drawing the skull up and back. This little EOP here. This little bump. So where your nuchal ligament attaches and runs down the spine. You're lifting right from there, back and up. And again, and I'll show you the, the other way I corrected this that Coach Solace taught me. Now I have a little bit of a background in Olympic lifting. So he told me, pretend like you got that barbell here. And you're just going to lift the elbows higher in that front rack position. As I'm lifting the elbows, I'm tightening the stomach. Drawing everything back like I'm flattening my body to the wall. That's going to help me bring that chin in as well. Get a lot of length. Flatten that neck out. Again, it should be tough. It shouldn't feel like, hmm, that's easy. What's he talking about? It should feel like you're grabbing a lot of that restricted, tight, short trap. And you're stretching it out. And usually with that upper trap dominance, we just have that suboccipital tightness. That occiput's just locked down on the back of the skull. And that's our life force right there. We've got our cranial nerves right there. We've got all these nerve roots coming out of the spine that go to our organs, our heart, and our lungs, and all that good stuff. So if we're compressed, we're jammed down, gravity's just smashing us all the time. That tr tight travel is so just smashing on your nerves and your joints. It's not just about neck pain at that point. <clears throat> it's about your nervous system, which is your life. So you got to get stress off the nervous system. we got to open up the discs. If you can see a little bit here, the little... Nerve, just look at the jaw here. You can see the space in between. There's this little IVF, intervertebral foramen, where the nerve comes out. So if we're getting compressed, we're getting jammed down on there. Not a lot of space. We can get even bone on nerve, or it's just going to jam the disc. doesn't take much for the disc to herniate or shift and start causing some problem there. All right, let's fix his jaw. One more time, just to reinforce. I'll turn this way, just give you a different view. And relax the feet. <clears throat> this seems really simple, but there's just something you can work on all the time. That's why we're just beating the dead horse over and over again here. Relax. 
as I'm engaging, you'll feel my hands, you know, I can't see my hands, but they're on the quads. You'll feel that engagement from the quads. You extend, you feel a nice stretch here in our scalenes. This is just allowing me to have good control from my abdominal region. And we kind of mentioned it before, but we didn't talk about it enough. The ribs here. Like I said, we don't want this where they're extending, where they're thrusting forward, because that's causing hyperextension in my back. You see that extensive arch? So we want loose. So when you look at my back, flatter. <clears throat> And extending, controlling those ribs, pulling up, lengthening the back of the neck. I can feel like, okay, there's a big tug of war right there. So now I just work on fighting for that last inch. Leveling the eyes of the horizon with a sad clown face or that nice front rack position. Or even just going into your sphere, playing tug of war. This works with your phone too. I have your phone there, just texting. Pull your chin, and there's a, a rope from your phone to your chin, and you're playing tug of war. You're pulling the chin back, pressing the arms forward. Great exercise. We got that good broad position. Another thing you'll feel is you're holding your phone, or you're in that sphere of tension that they talk about. You're really well stacked and expanded. It'll feel like you can't straighten your elbows out. As hard as you try, if they do, what happens? My chin goes forward, or I thrust my pelvis forward. So it should feel very tough, just like this. We like that back neck. I just feel like I just can't get my eyes level with a rise, and I want you to feel those things. I'm breathing heavy. Why? I'm exhausted. This is powerful stuff. There's hundreds of pounds of pressure being pulled out by this trap. You're fighting very tight muscles. So you're putting a lot of work and just stretching these out. So I know this video is very long and expansive, but I hopefully that breaks down and helps you attack the workouts, the daily exercises a little bit better, just arming yourself with a little bit of that anatomy knowledge there, okay? We'll continue on this again. Keep working through the neck pain protocol. Work on stabilizing, stop cracking your neck all the time. Every time you get to use your phone, try this seated. Think about these positions, washing dishes. Keep hitting this stuff over and over again. The trick is to turn it into daily life. Every time you go to pick something up, don't just round the back. Don't just drop the neck down. Think chin back, chest up, then move from the hips. So we're dealing with upper trap dominance, simple things to do throughout your day. The biggest thing is using your phone. If you have your phone, a lot of us will look down, right? So then we breathe from the shoulders. We get those twenty to 30,000 breaths from that shoulder every day. So just bringing that phone eye level without letting the pelvis dump forward. So as we're bringing the phone up, and this is very similar to what we'll do, like in the long wing to sphere tension, is we're just keeping that pelvis back, drawing the head away from the hand so we can do something similar just being on the phone, sending a text, checking your phone, just take a breath and I'm keeping my knees loose, bent if you will, I'm not locking them back. So when I lock back, the glutes engage and the pelvis thrusts forward and the belly starts going forward. So I'm trying to suck that belly in, draw the pelvis back behind me, get length throughout the neck. Another position that works well, especially seated, is just taking this position, bringing the hips behind us. And I'm trying not to bend at the back when I do this. Hinging. Drawing the hips back, then here I can pull that chin in, check my phone. And you can see how this would work in a seated position, maybe a little extra knee bend. But either way, here or here, it's good, sitting down, very good. You're on the edge of your seat, and that'll also help, just lengthen that whole spine. Then when you breathe, you almost preemptively pull the shoulders down, instead of the shoulders raising when we breathe. If I'm on the phone, I roll my elbows in. I'm actively tracking those shoulders down, getting the neck long. When I breathe, I feel my rib cage drive outwards, laterally expand. Pinning those shoulders down, pinning those elbows in. You can do this hinging or just standing or scrolling the elbows in, just like we scroll the thighs in. Get tall, then roll everything in. If you're just compressed and you're rolling, you'll notice you shrink. You want to get tall. Then roll the body, roll the elbows in, roll the knees in. 
then breathe, and you'll feel it's very hard to get air in, but that's what you want. You're retraining your body how to breathe, breathing into the back of the ribs, breathing into the side of the ribs, as long as you're not breathing the traps up into the air all day long. That's what beats you up the most, and that's what trains your shoulders to lift. Because even if you're doing a squat and lifting, if your traps are up here, you're not lifting with your legs, you're still lifting with your traps. So the goal, the trick is to pack those down. Think about that elbow squeezing in. I feel my lower back nice and engaged. It's protecting my spine. So now when I lift, shoulders don't lift. The legs push the ground away. But you get there when you get there. That's a tough combination. It takes a lot of retraining. You first start retraining the breath, that decompression stance, then the hip hinge, and then you build into the squats. There's a lot of steps to get there, but I like to show you where you're going so you understand why you're doing all this work on the foundation training app, which you should be. Working through cervical protocols, the low back protocols, or any type of issues you have, like either knee or ankle issues, check in with those protocols as well. These videos just help you understand, get a broader scope of where you're going and, and, and how we can help you one-on-one -on -one or with chiropractic and ultrasound to help you reach those goals attack those areas where there's weaknesses or restriction and mobility issues. So this video is on upper trap dominance and how your neck and the restriction there is connected to your low back pain and the degenerative patterns that we develop in our thoracolumbar fascia down here in this area. So what happens when the traps get dominant is they create rounding and they pull upwards and a lot of times we hide that rounding by bringing the pelvis forward. So if I'm kind of hunched here, you can kind of see that in the old man posture. But if I do this, it kind of makes it less visible. The change just happened at my spine, where I extended from here, bring my gaze level with the horizon. But within that, there is compression. And that's what we most worry about. The biggest thing is compression, always on the spine, jamming down on all the joints and the nerves. That causes most of our problems. A lot of people think it's the twists and the turns and the distortion, like the scoliotic type presentation that or the scoliosis type presentation that people will appear with, where everything's just twisted, uh, one leg is shorter or longer than the other. That's not actually the biggest problem, and that's not the biggest contributor to pain that we have. It's actually compressive forces. And we have something called load tolerance that we want to build, or load intolerance, if you will. Most people have load intolerance. They cannot handle weight being pressed on them. But we need that. We need gravity pushing down on us. We need the ability to resist it, to open up, strengthen the muscles, teach the muscles to hold our spine long. So with this upper trap dominance, you might not have neck pain. You might be wondering why you're watching this video. Sometimes it has more to do with the lower back issues. I'll feel this bruised apple type of feeling down here in this thoracolumbar fascia. And that might not even be joint damage. It could just be those couple layers of thoracolumbar fascia that get tears in it. So there's just this chronic swelling. That's why I say it feels like a bruised apple. It's squishy. And then in contrast, we'll come up here and it'll feel like cement, right? Rock hard, traps are very stiff. We have excessive rounding. And sometimes you don't even see that on the person until they lay down. And you're like, oh, okay, there's, a, there's a big old hump here because we hide it by shifting the pelvis forward and we don't see it. Or some people really shift the pelvis forward and they draw the head way back, but this is still compression. Right? They haven't brought length. They're still resting on the joints, if you will, where we need to learn load tolerance, load resistance, gravity resistance, getting length. You notice that requires the feet to push the ground away, getting tall. This might seem like a simple concept, but the more you work on it, you realize it's very tough. And you'll, you'll realize how much compressive force is, even within your own body. Forget about gravity or weightlifting, just the restriction in, in the fascia itself is like a tight suit compressing you and we need to lift up against All right so that instability instability is just unwanted motion right there's too much motion happening here in the lower lumbar joints and the, and the sacroiliac joints and not enough motion at the hips so even a super bendy person they'll think they're very flexible and have very restricted hips just all that mobility can be coming here from the lumbar spine and you'll see this kind of tucked position with the pelvis and loss of that normal lordosis. You can kind of see here on Mr. Billy Bones that he has a nice C shape. That's what we want. So the front of the pelvis will be lifted upwards, the pelvis will be tucked, and 
the stretching just seems to no longer work for them. They're doing a lot of yoga and it helps in the, at that moment, but they just keep getting worse over and all because it's, they're not addressing weaknesses and they're not teaching themselves how to move. So all this stuff should be ac applicable to what you're doing every day, you're washing dishes. You should be able to, you're not back bending into it, right? You're teaching your body to hinge, keeping that long neck, just that little subtle hinge. We're doing it in a split stance. You can do therapy while driving your car, washing your dishes, all these little things all day long because you should be retraining within reason, retraining your body to just to move better, how to pick things up off the ground better. You have 4,000 opportunities every day. Average person bends about 4,000 times a day. Hopefully that's not happening from your low back every single time. Most people it is. So when you train this area not to move, teach the hips to do the motion. And a lot of that goes back to this upper trap dominance. This is so tight, it's forcing the bend to happen at the low back. It's chronically pulling upwards, just making this very weak. And you have a downward pull too from the tight glutes, the tight hamstrings. So this is just caught in the middle of a tug of war and it's just losing it and things are being torn on both ends, right? So that's why you just wake up and you've sprained your back. I'm like, well, I didn't do anything. I didn't sprain it. You did. The body, you know, when you go to sleep, unfortunately, your, tor your short, tight muscles, hypertonic muscles, are still hypertonic and short and pulling all night long. So you can wake up and have damage. Because when we're awake, we can kind of fight that a little bit. When you're asleep, it's really pulling and it's really winning. And that's why it can be really exhausting, too, throughout the day. Your body's just having to work so much harder to do simple motions because there's so much imbalance. It's exhausting you. It's just stealing all your ATP and your energy away from you.